Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Talk with James Pierre. Today, we are very honored and delighted to have an icon of our community, the one and only Elliot Rodriguez from CBS4. Thank you so much for being no, here. No, thank you. And thank you for the warm welcome. We feel like we are home, <laughs> like we're out wow. of studio, but here, uh, here at the CBS4, it's another welcome, a uh, warm welcome that we have from you. So uh, thank you so much. Impre- you're pretty good at this. Uh, thank you. Thank you. We're trying our best to copy you as well. Okay. First, let's start. You're from uh, uh, not Miami, from well, another place, yeah. and you know, a bird just traveled with you to Miami. Is that what it is? Kind of that way. Uh, I was born in uh, New York City, mm-hmm. in the Bronx. You know, a lot of people from yes. South Florida who live in South Florida are New Yorkers. Yeah. Uh, my parents uh, left Cuba. Uh, And we're immigrants. Uh, I come from an immigrant family. So I identify with with immigrants from all over the world here. So it's not the weather from New York. No, it wasn't the weather. My parents left Cuba. My father in the 1940s, my mother in the 1950s. And they met in New York. They weren't your typical Ah. Cubans. Uh, Mm -hmm. So many Cubans who left here for political reasons. They were political refugees. That was not the case with my family. Uh, my parents came here as immigrants. My father came because he lived in a poor neighborhood in mm-hmm. Cuba, in Regla. Anybody who knows Cuba yeah. knows that area. And he wanted to better his life. He was a young man. My father was always very adventurous. So at 21 years old, he left Cuba by himself and moved to New York City. My mother uh, also, she became a widow early, and she moved to New York City in 1955, and they met in New York. Yeah. They wanted to go back to Cuba, but then after the revolution and everything, they stayed in New York. I was born in, in, in New York City, uh, where my sister was born, and then we moved to Miami when I was 12 years old. And wait, I, wait a minute, before Miami, <laughs> I, I want you to take me back to the childhood at home. You know, Cuban parents, yes. how was it in New York? Well, have you seen the show Que Pasa USA? Absolutely, So just yes. trans, transfer that to New <laughs> yeah. York City, and that was, <laughs> <laughs> that was right. And that was my upbringing. Uh, we lived in, in the Bronx in New York. My father worked in a grocery store in the Bronx, and he eventually became the owner of the store. So it's a, to me, it's the American dream. It was mm-hmm. a typical American immigrant story. My father came here, worked in a grocery store, worked hard, holidays, weekends, and he be, uh, eventually became the owner. He became a businessman, and he did well for himself. So we, we lived in uh, New York City, very happy. Uh, typical New York upbringing. Anybody yeah. from New York out there knows what it's like. You, if you're a kid, you, you're in the yeah. streets. You learn how to play stickball, handball. Yeah. Uh, that, that was me. That was a, as a kid in the streets yeah. of New York. But then at 12, we moved to Miami. And after moving to South Florida, I've never looked back. I, I, this is yeah. home for me, and I love it here. Wow. Well, and we love you here as well. Thank you. Since, uh, you know, you're a member of the, the large family <laughs> of uh, uh, South Florida. At a very young age, where you identify yourself as Cuban, or as strictly American? Oh, that's a good question. I've always uh, considered myself Cuban-American, and I'm okay with that. People say, Mm -hmm. oh, you're hyphenated American. I don't, I don't, I think it's fine. Uh, You know, like Italian-Americans, Mm Polish-Americans that came before us. Since I'm the first generation American, I grew up in a very Cuban household. My parents did not speak English. I was always the official translator. Every time a letter would come, my dad would, here, kid, read this. Yeah. <laughs> read this. So I'm very comfortable with the term Cuban American. That's fine. I, I accept it. I'll take it. Yeah. And now in uh, South Florida, when you move at a young age in South Florida, you went to school here. Yes. And the biggest part of it is you went to Miami to college. I did. Tell me about your experience as Miami. Well, I want to tell you, James, I am very grateful to Miami Dade College because I was the first member of my family to go to college. My mom did not go to college. My father did not. Uh, my father did not go to college. It wasn't like I had been with my daughters when it was time to go to college. We went visiting different schools and got all the information. My parents didn't know anything about that. They were busy working. Uh, and I graduated from high school here. I went to LaSalle High School in Miami. And when it was time to graduate, everybody seemed to be going to Miami-Dade. Yeah. It was easy. It was local. It was affordable. And I ended up going to Miami-Dade College and it really was a great opportunity for me because I, um, in high school, I was involved in the school newspaper. I was a cartoonist. Mm-hmm. And then when I went to Miami-Dade, they gave me an opportunity to be involved in the newspaper. There. By that, at that time, it was called The Catalyst, mm-hmm. the Miami-Dade College South Campus. And I, my dream at that time, when I graduated from high school, was to be a cartoonist, an artist. I wanted to be an artist. I didn't know anything about Uh, news. And and, and let me stop you from there because the the, the most interesting part of it is you still remember the name, and I'm not going to give the name, of a professor 
yes. stopping you and said, what are you doing? You can use your energy for something else. You did, your, Garcia. you did your homework. Absolutely. This guy's right? good. This guy's good. <laughs> You're absolutely right. The advisor for the newspaper at Miami-Dade College, his name mm -hmm. was Mario Garcia, yeah. and he was the journalism teacher and advisor. And he, I told him, I said, I just walked in one day, I said, hey, I, I like to draw, uh -huh. and I want to be the cartoonist. At that time, I would draw like uh, political cartoons and satire and, you know, a little cartoon wow. strip. And he said, sure. He said, look. Uh, we need a cartoonist, we need an art director, and we'll even pay you a little bit of money. Wow. It was great. And um, he said, but the catch is, I want you to take a journalism class. I said, okay, fine, I'll take a journalism class. So I took journalism at Miami-Dade mm -hmm. College, only because the, the advisor for the newspaper told me I had to take it. And I ended up liking it. And he said I was a good writer. So he actually called me out in class one day. He said, hey, you, what are you doing wasting your time drawing cartoons. Yeah. You should be a, a reporter. You're a very good writer. You have a sense of curiosity. Uh, you write very clearly and you're able to get a story. Why don't you do that? So little by little I gravitated away from art because I really mm -hmm. wasn't yeah. that good an artist anyway. Wow. I enjoyed it but I wasn't that good and I uh, devoted more of my energy toward yeah. reporting and yeah. that's how I, I got into this business. Your first time going live. Oh, you know, it's, it's so natural, but something happened, an airplane tried to <laughs> stop you from going live, and you were saying, oh, there's an airplane, and you, you never forget that do we particular have to, moment. Do, we have, do you have to go there? Did you, <laughs> did you really have to go there? What is it, South Florida? This guy, uh, what is it, 60 minutes? <laughs> okay, no, no, you, you are good, you're good. Um, yes, when I graduated from the University of Miami, by the mm -hmm. way, I'm a big hurricane fan. Ah, right, there so you when go. I graduated from the University of Miami, I got a job right away as a reporter, as a news, newspaper reporter mm -hmm. at the Miami News. And I worked there for two and a half years, and after two and a half years, I got a call from a local television station offering me a job, paying more money, being on TV, uh, and being a, a reporter, starting out. Get that doesn't happen, job. doesn't happen. But it wasn't my dream at the time because I was happy being a uh -huh. newspaper reporter. But when they offered it to me, how could you pass it up? Yeah. So I, I accepted the job, but I said, look, I'll take this job if you guys promise to train me because I'm a newspaper guy. I don't yeah. know television. They said, oh, no problem. They didn't train me. They oh. put me right out there to cover stories on TV with no experience. I was a print guy. Yeah. And my first live shot was one that I'll never forget. It was a verdict in a very important case. Mm -hmm. And at that time, we had a 6 o'clock news. We didn't have a news earlier. The verdict came in in the afternoon and they broke into programming. You know how it is? Yeah. We interrupt this program to bring mm -hmm. you a special bulletin. Yes. Well, that was me <laughs> on my first time. Wow. wow. <laughs> and it was a verdict in a very important case. And I knew the story. I knew how to cover it. I knew the facts. That wasn't a problem. I didn't really know TV. And the cameraman said, cue him. And I didn't know whether cue him means you're going to cue him or it means start. Yeah. Yeah. It actually meant start talking mm -hmm. now. But I didn't. I said, Let's wait for the plane. Let's wait for the plane. <laughs> and it was terrible. Yeah. Fin eventually, I, I started talking about the case, but my first words were, wait for the plane. So you can imagine how I felt, because I'm in my hometown. Yes. Everybody I knew was watching. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, needless to say, the next day, I went in and I said, you know what? This is not for me. You guys said you were going to train me. You, you didn't do it. And you know, I'm going to go back to my newspaper job. Yeah. But and they the, said, the no. The beauty of it yeah. is you never stop. You overcame that situation to be where you are right now. Right. The beauty of it was that my bosses at that time at WTVJ, a mm -hmm. lady by the name of Ruth Sperling, and I, her boss was Ralph Rennick, who was an icon in this market at that time. And Ruth said to me, you know what? We made a mistake by just throwing you in there. We're going to take some time to help yeah. you. And actually, the people that helped me, believe it or not, were the photographers, the people behind the camera. The camera yeah. a lot, they were the ones that gave me tips, said, Elliot, no, don't do this, do it this way. And they helped me. So I, I eventually learned, but it was pretty tough that first day. Oh, wow, wonderful. Stay with us. We're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, I promise, we'll talk about everything else. No TV. What else? Get back.